Yeah, because I remember it being on. Me either, because I came and put this over here, and it's dark down yeah. this. Yeah, that monitor. See that monitor in the office is on. Hey, my paranormal people, let me ask you something. When you think of the Old West, what comes to mind? I'm sure there's a lot of images to think of, but I hope you said saloon because that's where we're going. The place that we're gonna be investigating tonight, it's housed in the building of an old saloon and that old saloon had a rough and rowdy past, which probably contributed to some of the uh, stories of unexplained things going on there. And I'm excited and I'm glad you guys are coming along with us because remember, you are our fellow investigator and this place is gonna be awesome. I've been dying to go to this historic town to investigate. It is just such a charming town and I'm glad we finally got an opportunity to go there. So let's go meet up with Rodney and Rachel so we can go and explore and investigate the Live Oak Art Center in Columbus, Texas. Let's go check it out. Here we go. Trapped inside the mind of a dreamer. You know, I can't tell you how many times I have been guilty of just driving down the highway and not taking the time to venture off and go exploring. In this situation here, you'll be rewarded by this beautiful wrought iron bridge crossing the Colorado River. And once you do cross the river, it feels as though you've been transported back into time, back to a simpler time. As you drive through this town, it just embodies charm. Located off of I-10, just 65 miles west of Houston and 125 miles east of San Antonio, Columbus, Texas is the largest city of Colorado County as well as the county seat. Stephen F. Austin's old 300 began arriving in the area in 1821 and by 1823, a small community developed known as Beeson's Ferry or Beeson's Ford, whose moniker was named after an original settler who operated a ferry across the Colorado River. The town later renamed Columbus in 1835, supposedly at the behest of residents who had moved from Columbus, Ohio. This beautiful Tiffany-style glass dome has an interesting history in of itself, and I will provide a link below for you to read more about that history. The town played a pivotal role in the Texas Revolution. One of the residents included William D. Lacey, a signer of the Texas Declaration of Independence, and Sam Houston camped along the Colorado River at Columbus during the runaway scrape. Columbus was incorporated in 1866 after the Civil War. Columbus, Texas embodied the quintessential old western town. It had known Indian raids, the last of which occurred in 1838 where two citizens were killed. In 1906, the town was blighted by continual violence. Most notably was the Reese Townsend Feud, also known as the Colorado County Feud which lasted almost a decade, between 1898 to 1907. It was a politically motivated feud with several gunfights through those turbulent years resulting in the wounding and deaths of some of the participants and innocent bystanders. Texas Rangers, including the legendary Captain Bill McDonald, were ultimately dispatched, which essentially ended the violence and restored order. 
there's so much more intriguing history to discover about Columbus, Texas. So I will provide links down below for you to read at your own leisure. But for now, let's take a quick peek at the building we'll be investigating tonight. Well, we can't wait to get the investigation started, but first, let's go explore the historic and majestic and possibly haunted Stafford Opera House. Let's go check it out. President of the Columbus Historical Preservation Trust here in Columbus, Texas. And we want to welcome you to the Stafford Opera House. The Opera House was built in 1886 by R.E. Stafford, and we are the only flat floored opera house in existence in Texas today. The Opera House, when it was built originally, uh -huh. it served as a bank, okay. a dry goods store. We've had a Ford dealership in here. Oh, wow, really? Yes, it was in the <laughs> 70s. It was a Ford dealership oh, wow. in the early 70s. I'm going to have to look for a picture of that. That'd be really cool. <laughs> and then, um, so wow. they would do performances. Uh -huh. um, basketball games have been held here. Boxing matches have been held here. Different plays and performances, musicals. During World War II, apartments were made on the second floor uh -huh. behind the stage for military people to live. Wow. So that they, okay. could, they could live there. So, oh, that's yes, too sir. Cool. We're in the Buddy Rao room now. This is the room located downstairs in the Opera House. Um, this is a privately owned establishment. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. It was bought in 1972 by okay. the Magnolia Home Store, which is now the Columbus Historical Preservation Trust. Oh, okay. So, wow. and then it was opened back up and rededicated uh -huh. in 1990. And you were telling me that the house next door, a little of the history so of that. So, the house next door was also built by Mr. Stafford. This mm -hmm. is the Stafford Miller Hill House. Okay. So, the house is a two-story L-shaped house. It has um, the windows for the master bedroom were and the porch opens up to where you can open the windows on our second floor in the grand hall and Mr. Stafford could watch all the performances That's from true. you know and he would never have to come to the opera yeah. house. He would just they open the windows up and he'd get to see everything. He, he didn't have to mingle with the commoners. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so that, that would be cool though to, to oh, stay yes. home and just chill, get have a beer and then and then watch the show. Yes. Now, back in the 70s and 80s, a number of the homes in town were opened up okay. for tours. But so there are some places that are still open okay. to tour. You can always contact the Chamber of Commerce here in town. Okay. And Shelly Yannick will be able to um, help you. She is the tourism uh, director for the chamber and cool. she will be able to help anybody who'd like to set up a tour like you know if there's a tour group that yeah, wants to come yeah. out because we do have tour groups that come out sure and do private tours it is it is such a charming historic town i strongly recommend taking a tour and and just to come see these buildings but taking a tour around town man would be so so worth it supposedly maybe there's a rumor of a haunting of a ghost or maybe there you never know you know there may be because you can be downstairs here when the building is quiet and uh -huh. you can hear a noise upstairs and you know no one's up there because you're in the building by yourself yeah so you just you know it makes you wonder is yeah. there something up there should we be worried or is it just the building it's yes. an old building settling. an old building that creaks yeah. and makes noise i can imagine being here maybe late at night in the evening and then oh, you start yes. hearing those sounds and maybe that's how the rumors get started that could yes that's possibly a hundred percent true yeah. that, you know people do hear things i mean i've sat in the office across the way uh -huh. and heard things and i've texted people to be yeah. like okay so how much longer do i need to be <laughs> and you mentioned that uh, a group a, bit, a large group oh, did yes. come stay overnight um, and investigate. Yes, about and, six or seven years ago, uh -huh. a group came in out of Texas and set up. They had about 30 people with them, I think it was. Okay. And they set up all kind of equipment, uh -huh. but our friendly ghosts did not show themselves that night. Well, they probably were just scared off by so many people too many being people. here. Too many people, yeah. Yes. 
If you said it, it could be because a lot of uh, shootings happen in the street, oh, yes. maybe it could be attributed to It could be. Some of the so history? the Unermeyer building, which is uh -huh. down the street, it was a saloon. And okay. then it was a dry goods store. And then yeah. it was an undertaker store. Yeah. The part of the great history in Columbus is that there used to be shootouts in the street. Um, and there had been several um, reported shootings around this area wow. as it developed. So you never know, it could be somebody's ghost that is just unsettled about sure. dying in the middle of the road here. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's such a privilege to have come here and finally, finally, checked out the old That's opera awesome. house. We, I've been, I've been knowing about this for years. Thank you so much, You're Joe. You're welcome. We are excited that y'all came out and see a part of Columbus history. Oh, I, I loved it. Just to hear the history of, of, the, uh, yes. of the opera house, the building, the house next door, and to walk around. It's just a privilege oh, yes, to sir. have been able to do this. Um, we have 80 historical markers in our town. We're very proud of it. You'll notice the live oak trees in town. Yes. We're the city of, of live oaks and friendly folks. Love it. <laughs> Thank you so much, You're Joe. Welcome. And then we're going to be going and investigating the, uh, the old building at the Live Oaks Art Center. So oh, here yes. we go. Hey guys, well, this is a first. I'm actually alone at the place that we're gonna be investigating tonight. So I'm gonna give you all a sneak preview. I'm waiting for the, the uh, president to show up so we can do an interview. And uh, I'm here all by myself. Let's say we get a quick walk through, walk around so y'all can, so can check it out. Kind of see what it looks like during the day. Sneak preview of the investigation. And nobody showed up. So I am personally going to give you a tour by reading the uh, pamphlet from the Columbus Historical Preservation Trust. According to the pamphlet, in 1867, Charles Brunson, a German immigrant, established the Brunson Saloon on the Courthouse Square. Now this is the actual original bar that was located here and it was fortuitously found stashed away in a barn and it was generously donated to the Live Oak Art Center. And as we make our way up the stairs, we'll see these beautiful wooden floors. And this space was actually once used as an opera house, but during the time of the saloon, it was the brothel area. Perhaps the sounds of the workers and the patrons still resonate within these walls. Several shootings took place in and around the Brunson Saloon, including the deaths of Sam Reese and Larkin Hope, participants in the infamous Stafford Townsend feud, which I had already mentioned. The Brunson Saloon closed in 1919. After its closing, the Brunson building was used for several different retail establishments until it became the Live Oak Art Center in 1986. And according to their website, the Live Oak Art Center is dedicated to promoting the fine arts, expanding art education, and enhancing cultural enrichment. The LOAC is proud to offer a robust permanent collection, a diverse and exciting exhibition schedule, and a variety of community education programs. Their exhibition calendar consists of approximately 10 exhibitions a year featuring established and emerging artists from around the state as well as artwork in a wide variety of media. They invite you to stop by 
and see all that LOAC has to offer. Well, since we'll be here all by ourselves and as long as we want, maybe some of the intriguing history will replay itself while we're here investigating. But first, I think we need some refreshments at the local watering hole. Let's go, shall we? Hey guys, what'd you think of the Hounsong Brewery? Good. So good. Really cool. You know what? Actually, this is weird because uh, usually it's packed. It was it was a quiet day today. It was it wasn't yeah. a lot of people. And it was pretty outside. Yeah, beautiful it's outside. Gorgeous right now. The yeah. weather's perfect. Yeah. Surrounded by these beautiful houses. Beautiful like homes. Gorgeous. Sit down, have a beer outside. But this investigation just feels out of the ordinary from the very beginning because we haven't had an, an interview. We haven't had a walkthrough. We have the whole place to ourselves. They just, here you go. We're, we're pretty much going in there. We're on our own. Yeah. We're on our own. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Instead of hearing about Good it beforehand thing. and then we're preconceived thinking. So now we get to experience for ourselves. With a blank slate. Just blank no slate. No preconceived notion, no information. Oh. That we have a little information based on this little pamphlet. Like, <laughs> that's right? just for everybody. This much information yeah, yeah. on a building that's yeah. happening. <laughs> so we're like flying blind here so. and they just left us, which is awesome. And I appreciate that, Stephanie, for, for letting us yeah. do this and stay here. But yeah. now I'm ready to. Yeah. And also uh, all night. And as all long as night. we want. All night. Yeah. As long as we want, so uh yeah. Alright, here we go guys. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty flat. Yeah. Uh, it's completely flat around here. Yep. You feeling? What's more uh, upstairs? More up here? upstairs, and then where the bar is. But when the bar? I mean, that doesn't mean anything because they can always move around. And yeah. Like oh, there's the elevator. <laughs> if you want to go down the elevator. That's fine. I brought other shoes with me. They said it's slow, but it shouldn't get stuck. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> All right, here Shouldn't we go. Shouldn't be the keyword. <laughs> we always like doing these scary, spooky elevators at these places that we go to. It just, wow. Your time travel today will be approximately one minute between floors. <laughs> Enjoy your trip. This is unnerving that it takes one minute. Yeah. We're still, look, it's, we're still it's on still two. two. We'll do the stairs going forward. Holy crap. Man. Well, it's still on two. It's almost a little weird in here. Oh, there it goes. Woo. I mean. Is that just me or is it like just it, a no, little weird? No, it's just. <laughs> there it goes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I'm not using that. <laughs> Jeez. No. All right. All right, we're going, we are going upstairs. There it goes. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're going upstairs. We have these sensors down here, which you guys can hear. It's pretty annoying. But since we'll be upstairs, if something triggers it, it's not, it's not us and we are the only ones in this building. Let's do this. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. This is our first session of the night. 
It is, what, 8.30? This used to be a brothel. And it was a saloon downstairs, and we hear it was pretty rough and rowdy here. People have heard you moving around. If there's anybody here, and if that was you that they've heard in the past, can you please make a sound for us? Let us know you're here with us. We were actually invited to come here and communicate with you. And from our understanding, nobody has ever tried to communicate with you guys the way we are. We mean no disrespect. We mean no harm. We just want, we're curious. We want to get to know you. I did hear that. Yeah, before it was over, yeah. Yeah. We, we have brought devices, but these devices are safe. They'll just allow us to communicate or allow you to communicate with us. We have devices that will light up or make a sound the closer you get to them. And they're completely safe. Yeah, no need to be scared or apprehensive. Trying to figure out who we are. We're just here to say, hey, what's up? You can talk to us. You can do pretty much just about anything. We're okay. That was outside, wasn't it? Yeah. We know this, this area was pretty violent in the past. Did you happen to die here? We're going to be here for a while because we really want to communicate with you. But if you don't want us here or upstairs, let us know. We can go downstairs. If you're downstairs, can you come up the stairs and come meet us up here? Can you please try to make any kind of sound? You can say something, you can move something, you can knock on a wall. Move the chandelier. Turn the light on. What, whatever you can do. That will let us know that you're here with us. It's pretty quiet. Do you feel anything, Rachel? Definitely is a beautiful building to be stuck in, if you're stuck here. Which, if you are stuck, and you don't want to be stuck anymore, and you are ready to cross over, we can help with that too. But we're not here to force anything, we're not here to force anybody, and we really just want to get to know you and talk to you, hear your story. It's your choice. You may not have had a lot of choices. If you had to work here, you probably didn't have a whole lot of um, freedom. Probably just a whole lot to do a lot. If you're still here in the saloon, can you please let us know? Is this your watering hole? Did you enjoy coming here? Oh. What was that? 
Was that outside or? I thought the vibration on the floor. Did you really? Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. I thought the vibration on the floor. I definitely heard it. I thought it was outside. Okay, yeah. The tra yeah, the railroad tracks, yep. Yeah, yep. So I'm surprised that this street right here is so <laughs> it's just, just so busy. <laughs> No. Oh, sh <laughs> and on this side road too. This isn't even the main drag. I mean, like, what the hell? Really okay. Be yeah, because I've never been on. me either. Because I can't even put this over here, and it's dark down yeah. this. Yeah, that monitor. Yeah, here you go. See that monitor in the office is on. And we've been Rachel here just since saw about it. 4 p.m. Nobody's been in there, so it's been four hours. Like surely it should be. And I don't, I don't recall even just walking by now. I don't recall it. You know, or even when I walked in earlier when it was already dark, I don't remember it being on. Yeah, me either. And whenever I put this here, yeah, the only way to do it. Is like, I even have my my phone light. I gotta move the keys perfectly. So far it's been pretty quiet inside the actual building. And we're now in the courtyard and uh, we're just gonna post up here for a bit. Rachel feels something maybe that could have happened out here. So we'll see, we're, we're gonna give it a shot. The rim pod's behind you. The rim pod's behind me. We got the sensors inside the building, the lights, and then the, uh, the other sensor that goes off. So we'll see. And that light, in the office, I'm, I'm not sure if it was on or not. The computer, I'm sorry, the, com the monitor, the screen. So, I don't know. All right, guys, here we go. <laughs> This has been quiet so far tonight. How do you feel the energy up here? Rachel? I don't, I'm not picking up on anything. Still kind of. Like again, I would stay the night here all by myself. And yeah. <laughs> not, not, so not sleep comfortable, well. huh? Yeah. Especially with those dolls downstairs. Well, I don't, no, <laughs> I don't want to sleep with dolls. It's darker in here than it was earlier. Sure seems like it. Or is it just because of my camera? I turned the. Uh, well, we had more the news moved. Yeah, the yeah, that's true. If there's anybody up here or anywhere in this building, if you died here, if you worked here, if you just came up here for a recreation, you just let us know you're here. Make a sound. Okay, we're downstairs, so feel free to walk around upstairs. We're not in your space. Feel free to come down the stairs. Or please feel free to join us over here at the bar.
going to close the door. over there. And upstairs, I think. Yep, here it comes again. Here we go again. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Now here I can't comes even. the train. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Blowing that thing. <laughs> we have other devices that you can use. That you can move or get close to them. Can you please go up to any one of these other devices that we have? Whoa. Whoa. Thank you. The train? The train? Yeah. No. So the last train that passed by? Yeah, it was a lot. Forceful. A like, lot heavier. Yeah. There was no noise in there. That's the first time we heard that. That's perfect. That was loud. If that was you that made that knock, can you please do it again? Is that what we heard earlier? Man, I don't know. Some, it's not a like a knock. Yeah, that, that, that right there. Yeah. I was talking about that table. Yeah. Uh-oh, look who's cutting out. Actually, I'm cutting out too, so. Uh, man, it was fun. You know what, the investigation is not over. Somebody's staying. And, uh, <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully he'll, he'll catch something. So the investigation is not over. We heard some sounds, and I know you cut it on your camera. I don't know, some weird things happened, but it was a relatively quiet night. You know, but what 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 y'all think? I mean, pretty cool. I'm really interested to see what what we capture when you play back. Yeah. yeah, but it was just what what a cool opportunity to investigate here and to be left here on our own, and it's just a a, a unique experience right. the way this played out. We still haven't even got the interview yet, <laughs> so we'll we'll see how it plays out. But we're I was first ones too. what's that? We're the first ones too. Yeah, we're the first ones. Absolutely. So a lot of fun, had a good time. The investigation's not over. This is just good night and good luck, Ronnie. Oh. <laughs> Peace, guys. <laughs>that we had at the Live Oak Arts Center. And I'm just gonna wrap this up really quick. I'm having a beer here in Belleville at the Huff Brewing Company. They have a new location. The beer is amazing. Just like Mel said, can't get enough of that Huff. Really cool and it's overlooking the, uh, the old Belleville Gel House, which by the way, we investigated. Go check it out. But anyway, Columbus, uh, the town it exudes charm. I mean, it, Columbus is one of those places that I've always said was a hidden gem and uh, if you've never been to Columbus 
it, it sincerely honestly is a hidden gem guys do yourselves a favor pull off the highway i-10 and go check out columbus texas the history the charm i mean it, it is amazing guys uh i'm glad we stumbled upon it the uh, architecture the buildings the, the stories the homes i mean there's just so much charm it's just it's it's become one of my favorite favorite locations i want to start off with some thank yous before i wrap this up thank you so much joe vangler she's a vice president of the columbus historical preservation trust she's the one who gave us the tour the opera house if you ever do research online about haunted places in columbus and, and there's quite a few but they're not you'll never find them they're hidden gems the uh, opera house keeps coming up oh is it really haunted or not i, I don't know but it's it's a beautiful building and i strongly strongly recommend swinging by and checking it out uh, also i'd like to thank shelly janik with the uh, columbus chamber of commerce thank you so much for introducing us to joe and giving us the lead the art center super super big thanks to stephanie at the live oaks art center thank you for giving us the opportunity to investigate for giving us the trust to stay there by ourselves overnight it was an awesome amazing place uh, to investigate thank you so much you guys were awesome very very informative and uh, I, I can't wait to, to go back and explore more of your town well what, what a what an awesome opportunity and privilege it was guys thank you so much for watching this episode with us and uh, and investigating with us let us know what you think we're gonna have an epilogue so we can discuss some of the stuff if we caught anything and share this because it's gonna help us help the places that we go to and you know we're trying to do every little thing we can to keep history alive stay safe stay healthy we'll see you on the next road trip peace guys